Welcome back, folks. I'm Meg Kruger. This is our Groundskeeper Chat Series, and today we are joined by Jared Minnick, Field Service Consultant for Major League Soccer, Lead Advisor with the Natural Grass Advisory Group, and we have a lot to unpack today. So we're going to get started right away. Um, Jared, please introduce yourself. We're so excited for you to join us. Uh, great. Well, thank you. It's, uh, it's nice, to, nice to join you. I appreciate the, appreciate the time to to talk about some fields and some grass. Um, anybody that knows me knows that I will talk about grass for days, um, including my wife. You know, poor, poor her to have to hear about it, right? So, <laughs> so I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to uh, chat with you a bit today about uh, a few, di- few different things when it comes to high traffic sports fields. Absolutely. And that's going to be our main focus today, getting the most out of your high traffic areas. And what perfect example than the MLS is back tournament. Um, you guys definitely had some high traffic there, an unprecedented, an, an unprecedented event <laughs> that we're really excited to kind of unpack here. Um, so, you know, besides the COVID components, um, you guys were up against a ton of challenges as far as um, how many games you had to pull off, um, you know, the schedule, the crew, kind of just go through those fast facts for us and kind of um, set the stage for the weight of what this event was. <laughs> oh boy, well, it was, uh, it, it was pretty unique, that's for sure. It's, uh, and, and, any and all credit goes to uh, the, the ESPN Wide World of Sports, uh, and, th- and I'll preface that as as I go through this uh, and as we discuss this, uh, when I say ESPN, I do mean ESPN Wide World of Sports. Uh, I also might say Wide World of Sports, and or I might say Disney because uh, obviously there are the Wide World of Sports set is a uh, is a Disney park, so. <laughs> I get my, I get my, I got my terminology pretty good, but just to cl- clarify for everyone else, um, you know, obviously their team, uh, the, their team of field managers and, uh, and, and their labor force. I mean, they are the, they are the, the stars of what we, what we did. That's for sure. So, uh, you know, the, the head field manager there is, uh, Mr. Tim Flowers, uh, and he's assist, assisted by, uh, Tommy Evans and John Turnbull. Uh, and, uh, you know, this, this event, you think about essentially what it was and, and, you know, I I speak to a few folks and I don't even realize exactly what it is that we, what, what we were up against. It was, um, essentially the entire league of major league soccer, you know, when when we stopped in March, uh, then we reached, we did a, a full tournament to restart the season. And when I say a full tournament, all 26 teams in the league went to one place being ESPN wide world of sports uh, and played a tournament uh, 51 matches in 35 days in total is what we played. Uh, originally it was supposed to be 54 matches. Um, but then uh, once the event was just getting started, uh, we did lose two teams on uh, Nashville and Dallas uh, to COVID, uh, they had some had an outbreak in both teams. Uh, yeah, that was that was a scary time um, because you weren't sure if you know, especially at that point. That was early July. Um, you know, that's when Florida's numbers were really spiking. Um, I mean, it was just really terrifying to think, you know, what's going on. You know, we're in this we're in this bubble, but is there you and, and you know, come to find out, no. You know, it was just cases that had been contracted for the teams that had arri- arrived in Orlando. So, um, thankfully, thankfully, once everyone was in the bubble, I mean, amazingly, you know, see what the has continued to do. Um, you know, once that, you know, obviously why Major League Baseball is, is going to do a bubble for the playoffs, um, you, know, it, you know, proved it worked. Um, you know, NWSL. The women's professional league also did the same thing in Utah. Um, so, we, you know, with that kind of background, I mean, the entire league converged in one place. Um, and, you know, it, well, we used uh, MLS used 17 fields at the 30 field complex. That is the ESPN wide world of sports. Um, so, you know, what, what Tim and, 
and his guys were up against. They weren't just maintaining our fields. They were maintaining the other fields as well. And and you think, oh, yeah, no problem. I just got a few other fields. No, I have 13 other fields they had to maintain at the same time while we're using you know, 17 of the fields for you know, two to up to five hours a day. Because um, when you go to fit in that many training sessions for – for 26 teams, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a whole lot of, it's a whole lot of, uh, it's a whole lot of use, and a whole, whole lot of stuff going on. So, you know, this graphic really kind of puts it into, puts it into, uh, you know, into a summary, if you will. Uh, the Guinness, I guess it's not Guinness Book of World Records anymore because people don't, well, that, that dates me, makes me, makes me sound old that we used to pick up the Guinness Book of World Records. Now it's actually just Guinness World Records because it's on the internet. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, they certified the MLS's back tournament uh, being the largest single site professional soccer tournament that's ever happened. Wow. Um, you know, we, we can essentially back out of that. that This is the largest single site professional a sporting event that's ever taken place, you know, being that an entire league was in one place, especially for an extended period of time. Mm-hmm. Um, in total, 49 days from the first team that arrived uh, to start training camp until the, the final on uh, August 11th. Mm-hmm. So it was, uh, you know, it was, it was quite a, quite a load. And it, it wasn't just the team showed up the day before the event started. You know, they, they showed up, you know, weeks before and, and we're doing two a day trainings to get back fit again because they've been off for three months. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's highlighted here in the, the training session piece of, you know, we use 14 fields for training sessions, um, you know, and a total of 49 days of training sessions. And that yields well over 500 training sessions in total. Um, you know, we think about during this 500, this uh, 49 day period, you know, Typically, as field managers, we're overwhelmed, um, or, or, or we, you know, our our daily our daily focus is our one team or our one coach. You know, like a college field manager is you know dealing with more. Obviously, um, we, were, we were dealing with twenty six teams, and you know, all of those are just on fourteen fields, so they didn't even have their own individual fields. Um, so it really was a really was a an interesting undertaking uh even just from that standpoint um, definitely well tra- training periods of you know 7 a.m to noon and then essentially 7 p.m to midnight uh, at that point we couldn't do any field work um because you know the the teams were in uh we we needed to keep the maintenance crews away from the players um so essentially what what Tim and his guys were tasked with was to maintain these 14 fields for training before 7 a.m. Or, or essentially between midnight and 7 a.m. or between 12 noon and 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. And it rained 20 of the 35 days mm-hmm. of the ma- – at least when matches were taking place. And so that – you know, that's a, that's a washout for at least, you know, essentially two hours in the afternoon. Um, so it was, yeah, in every fit, way possible, the cards were stacked up against you. <laughs> it, was, it was just, it, it was unbelievable. It really was unbelievable that, um, you know, and even taking it back, I mean, I appreciate you saying that because they certainly were, uh, even taking it back, you know, this came together, uh, essentially, you know, because of COVID and then because of, you know, because of no events, you know, uh, uh good portion of you know it's pretty well documented a good portion of the entire disney cast for all of their parts have been furloughed mm-hmm. um you know tim and, and his guys said you know they were they were down to a pretty small pretty small staff and as the you know it was pretty it was public that the players association uh rejected the first proposal for this event mm-hmm. um so then the league and, and and the players association worked on a you know a revised plan that when that got ratified and accepted we essentially at that point you know it was uh essentially had you know two weeks to prepare before the first team arrived for training and by the time they pulled their guys back pulled or pulled their staff back from furlough, we really just had 10 days of preparation time. 
Um, so not only were things stacked against our maintenance program because of the sheer volume of, tra- of the uh, training sessions here, but they only had 10 days to get the fields ready. And they hadn't been played on for three months. You know, most people, pe- mo- people that don't understand field maintenance, oh, well, they hadn't been played on for three months. So they, you know, they must have been in great shape. Well, you know, the, the basic maintenance of COVID versus preparing these surfaces for the, you know, the, the top athletes in, you know, in United States soccer and essentially, you know, one of the top, one of the top soccer leagues in the world. Um, you know, that doesn't just happen in 10 days. No, definitely not. So it was, it was quite a, that in itself was a feat uh, mm-hmm. that, that, Tim and his crew were able to pull off and, 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 you know, to, to take it even to another level, you know, it was, it was, um, you know, just that much going on, but, you know, and we, we talked training sessions there. I mean, match matches, we played 51 matches in 35 days, um, 51 major league soccer matches in 35 days. I mean, you think about a, a single stadium would host, you know, six, you know, 18 to 22 professional matches in a year. Um, well, we played 51 and th- 51 in 35 days. Insane. And we did, we did that just, <laughs> just on three fields, you know, just on, just on three fields. And so essentially the breakdown, the breakdown of total matches, um, you know, one of the fields was set up specifically for 9 a.m. ESPN matches. Okay. Uh, that that uh, I guess that's one thing. Fifty-one matches in thirty-five days, forty-one of which were on national television, on ESPN or Fox, and fifty-one matches which were broadcast internationally. So, at, at this point, you know, this was July eighth, and WSL had started. But when we were on ESPN on you know on 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 uh, July 8th that night, we were the only professional sporting event that was happening that day. Uh, you know, sports hadn't started again at that point, you know, outside of NWSL. Um, so, you know, we essentially, we had all these matches and guess what? You're on that, you're on national television for essentially all of them. Yeah. And, and, and there's no premise or preface to those folks sitting at home watching on television that, Hey, we only had 10, you know, we only had a few weeks to get the fields ready. You know, they, they, there's no excuses, you know, no excuses. That's what made this challenge so fun. Um, so one of those fields had eight, eight games and in, in eight matches in 16 days. Like I said, that field was specifically for 9 a.m. sunrise or, or you know, breakfast and coffee, you know, fo- football. And, and I think they were calling it football and breakfast, football for breakfast um, type situation. Um and then the other the other two fields um, were kind of set up specific or set up similarly. Um, twenty two matches in twenty nine days, and twenty one matches in thirty five days. The premise of that being in you know is this the the lower graphic being in the opening round, essentially what was called the, the round robin or the the opening round pool play. Each team played three matches, and each three matches counted as MLS regular season matches. Okay. So, um, so you know, the, that was even, you know, even a bigger pressure point at that point, because these, these, you know, we're back in the regular season, you know, they're playing matches at home now, but these matches meant something to these teams and you know, they were counting against the, the playoff standings and, you know, it really meant a lot. So, um, you know, in that initial 16 days, we played those eight, 9 a.m. matches. Uh, the uh, kind of the one of the, the the premier field, essentially, that was kind of the, the focal point field, played 13 matches in 16 days. And then the other field played 15 matches in 16 days. Wow. And uh, these are MLS matches. Mm-hmm. These aren't just – this isn't youth soccer. This is MLS. And you know, so essentially an MLS regular season is 16 to 18 home matches. So we essentially played an MLS regular season in 16 days 
mm-hmm. on you know, almost on two of these fields. 